turned to my explainer tonight now the director of public prosecutions is facing two petitions for his removal from office both have been filed within one week of each other but what does it take to remove the holder of that office and what are the next steps first things first an outline of the two petitions now the latest petition was filed by businessman francis njeru alleging gross misconduct on the part of the dpp for allegedly mismanaging a case the case is a property dispute involving china road and bridge corporation and a company called ARJ Capital, whose directors were charged with fraud with respect to compensation of land to pave way for infrastructure development. Businessman Francis Njeru claims the director of public prosecutions refused to prosecute the suspects. Now, this petition came just a week after another one that was filed by Gabrielle Van Stratton. She's the sister of murdered businessman Tob Cohen. Now, she lays a somewhat similar charge of selective prosecution claiming that the DPP declined to prosecute a judge, Kantai Olesankale, who's implicated in the murder of her brother. Now, before we get into what happens next and what it would take to remove the director of public prosecutions from office, let's understand the role of this office. Now, it is clearly outlined in the Constitution of Kenya, Article 157. The DPP's nomination is approved by the National Assembly before being appointed by the President. And the holder of this office must have the qualifications similar to those of a judge of the High Court. Now, the office has the power to direct the Inspector General of Police to conduct investigations into any allegations of criminal conduct. And the Constitution says that the IG shall comply. Now, the DPP may also undertake criminal prosecutions, take over and continue any such proceedings in a court of law. It is important to note the independence of the DPP in exercising this mandate. Now, the prosecutor can also choose to discontinue the prosecution of a case, but must do so with the permission of the court. Now, in doing all of this, the DPP must be guided by public interest, interests of the administration of justice, and to prevent abuse of the legal process. Now, whilst the holder of the office of the DPP enjoys independence and a non-renewable term of eight years, there are prescribed methods for their removal. And again, this is outlined in the Constitution. So, anyone desiring the removal of the Director of Public Prosecution heads to the Public Service Commission where they set out the facts in writing, laying the grounds for removal. Now, this is what the petitioners, the two of them, have done so far. So what happens next would be that the PSC would consider the petitions to see if the allegations meet these grounds that are set out in law, which are inability to perform functions of the office due to mental or physical incapacity, non-compliance with Chapter 6, which deals with issues of integrity, there's bankruptcy, incompetency or gross misconduct or behavior. Now, if the PSC determines that the allegations that have been made in a petition satisfy those grounds we have talked about, then they would send the petition to the president. The president shall within 14 days suspend the DPP. Thereafter, the adv with advice from the PSC, he would appoint a tribunal to conduct an inquiry into the matter and make recommendations to the president. Now, the law doesn't give a timeline for this inquiry, but it uses the word expeditiously. However, the word shall is used when requiring the president to act on the tribunal's recommendation. Now, this tribunal, what does it look like? Well, it consists of seven people, should it be formed. Four of them must be either current or previous judges of a superior court or persons who are qualified to hold that office. And then you would have one advocate of 15 years experience nominated by the body responsible for their professional regulation. And these remaining two need to be persons with experience in public affairs. Now, during the suspension of the DPP, he or she, the holder of the office, will be on half pay until they're either reinstated or removed from office. The director of public prosecutions, by the way, can also opt 
to resign rather than go through this entire process. And so now what happens next? Well, all eyes are now on the Public Service Commission for their determination on whether the allegations that have been set out in those two petitions meet the grounds we have set out here. And remember, the current holder of that office, Nurdin Haji, is the second um, director of public prosecutions under Kenya's Constitution 2010, having taken over from Keriako Tobiko, who resigned when he was appointed into cabinet. If it even goes as far as a tribunal being formed, that would be a first in Kenya's history under the Constitution of Kenya 2010. We will obviously uh, wait and see how this entire process unfolds. That's our explainer tonight.